Hi, I'm Dave L. David Likes Photography. I'm going to get out of this image. Uh, I'm going to show the difference between um, working profile, a convert to profile, and a sign in profile in Photoshop. And I'm in CS5. If you go edit, color settings, and uh, you can see I'm in the sRGB working color space, which I could change to these other color spaces. But um, RGB, preserve embedded uh, profile, and these checkboxes will flag any mismatch in colors when you open images with different profiles. Okay, so I'm going to open an image here without a profile, and it says it doesn't have an O profile, and I'm going to leave it as is and hit the OK. Where you can find out it doesn't have a profile is I do a save as, but I'm not going to save it, but you can see here down. The checkbox is not checked, and this sRGB, that's just telling you what the working color space is. Okay, so I'm going to back out of that. So if I go back to working color space under color settings, edit color settings, um, watch the color change when I go from sRGB to 1998 to Apple RGB to color mismatch um, and back to Apple 98. And you can do the same thing here when you check this box on and off, you can see color change. Uh, reason being is that the working color space, if the image has no assigned profile, Photoshop will assign the working color space profile to that image. In this case, uh, what I have checked here, if, uh, well, it was actually to begin with an sRGB um, and if I go ahead and just leave it as this, and I go back to save it um, and check the box, it'll save it as an sRGB. It'll assign the sRGB profile from the working color space to that image. Okay. Um, the other thing is, okay, so that's working color space. Um, why do you need a working color space? Uh, because one thing I will mention to you is, uh, for example, if I open an image that's not in the working color space and I open, um, okay, let's, let me open this 1998. See, it's flagging it. Okay, it says uh, there's a mismatch because, because uh, I got uh, sRGB working color space, but it's trying to open a 98 profile. Say, okay, just leave it. I come up here to file save as. You can see the checkbox is checked. It's 1998. So it has a profile attached to it. But my point is, if I go back to color settings in the working color space and I start changing these, you'll notice that there's no, there's no change in color. Reason being is, if the image has a profile already attached to it, in this case, 1998, uh, working color space doesn't matter anymore. You know, it, it, it's, it, so the only reason you need a working color space is if it doesn't have a profile, then you can just do save as, and what you see is what you get uh, when you save it. Um, or uh, you got to be, you know, you got uh, mismatched images, and you want to flag them because basically you want all the images to be the same color space, so all the colors match. So those are the reasons for the working color space. Okay, so let's let's get let's go back to the image with. Uh, no color space, okay, and I'm going to hit OK, and now I'm going to go to assign a profile, so edit, um, assign profile, okay, so uh, if we come down to profile and I go to, okay, uh, let's say 1998, uh, which um, if I hit this preview button, you can see the color change, okay, color changes, or if I go to any of these other settings, uh, and hit the preview button, I get color changes, right? Just about any of them. Well, except for sRGB. Color match, color change. Point being is, you don't really know what the color is if it doesn't have uh, a profile assigned to it until you assign one. And what the assign profile does is it just assigns a profile. It doesn't change the numbers behind the screen. But you, what you see is what you get after you assign a profile. So typically, you want to assign profile. And where you would use this is like if it has no profile, for example, a scanner. You scan an image a lot of times, they don't have profiles. So uh, what you print, you'll never know what you get unless you assign it and look at it in Photoshop before you print it. Um, or like if you get something off the internet, 
uh, has no profile, that's when you will use sign a profile. Okay, and the last thing, okay, is convert to profile. So I'm going to open up the 1998 profile again. And, okay, so now I come down to edit, convert to profile. Okay, and um, right now the image has a 1998 profile. I want to convert it in this case to sRGB. Now if you look and I do the checkbox, there's no change in color. The reason for that is when you do convert to profile, it maintains the color of the image on the screen. It'll change the numbers behind the screen, but it, it's going to look like what you see is what you get on the screen. And where you would use this is, for example, I work in 1998 a lot because I have a monitor that can view 1998 profiles, and I have a lab that uh, will process 1998 profiles. But uh, a lot of your labs, uh, for example, if you take it to Walgreens or something like that, they need an sRGB profile. So that's when you would do convert to profile. So in this case, I would hit the OK button and convert that to sRGB and, um, and then save that. And then that's how I would send it off to, say, Walgreens. But anyway, that's uh, the three different uh, things that I wanted to talk about as far as color management, which is working color space, uh, assign a profile, and convert to profile. That's my tip. I hope it helps. I'm Dave. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Dave, Val David Likes Photography. Bye-bye.